Good morning, James. <clears throat> so, I've been back for two days now from Cancun, and I let's talk about some of the things I saw, witnessed, went through. This retreat was obviously very, very different than the last one. I walked in as the advance, uh, student advanced meditator. So I did not have any expectations. I had one intention that I wanted from this um, retreat and something fun that I wanted to experiment with, which was I want to be able to ding my pineal gland in one breath. I want to be able to ding my pineal gland in five seconds. <clears throat> and I accomplished that over and over again. It was so much fun. Couldn't stop doing it, except I kept knocking myself out. It was very, very powerful, very strong. That happened, and a couple of the meditations. Oh, I was the guy that um, when I, in the body electric, I was in the second row right in front of Dr. Joe. And when we were sitting before the body electric, and I dinged it in you know, first breath, and then I fell on this uh, lady over here. And then I came to my senses again. I was back, and I did it again, and I knocked myself out, and I fell on Jetta. Uh, she was the, um, she was practically, she was my partner. She, you know, we, we made sure that we meditate together all week. That's always my intention to, you know, find a friend and just commit ourselves to meditating and eating and meditating and discussing the whole uh, thing. So I think it's very, very important to pair up rather than to be a silo person sitting with new people every time. I just don't like that idea. And I think you get way more benefit if you um, find a partner and you stay. And, and one partner, you can have a group of four to six, fine. But even then, you have to have one person, that one person that is going to be next to you, you know, kind of like the army concept, battle buddy, right? I needed my battle buddy. And I, and I, and I found her two days before uh, the event. I was there a couple of days prior to the um, starting of the retreat. That was fun. You know, we became friends. You know, she lives in Romania, uh, off to her life. <clears throat> but... Yeah, uh, you know, just it's 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 beautiful, right? You become really close friends with a person like that. Anyway, back to the experiences. So when I when did we do the uh, first blessings of the energy center? I think it was. I want to say it was day two morning when we when we blessed our energy centers. Maybe it was day two. Maybe it was day three. But it was so strong for me that. I was twitching and moving in ways that I didn't, haven't quite done it before, haven't quite experienced it before. And I couldn't control the movements. It was quite violent. Not quite as violent. I didn't hurt myself, but it was pretty close to hurting myself. I figured if this goes up a little bit, a few notches more, I'll be hurting. So, but it was a pretty good sweet spot. And then when we lay down at, um, afterwards, we're drifting away. Now, drifting away in this retreat were quite a bit longer than I remember in Orlando retreat. But I liked it because when you have a really good meditation, when you lay down afterwards, a lot of good things happen. And I needed that time for the drifting away to experience and see things and feel things and just that whole thing, right, experience, which is very different than when you're sitting in a chair. So, <clears throat> and when I lay down on the floor for the blessings of the energy centers, I was getting bounced off the floor. It was, oh my God, it was so, I actually screamed in the middle of it, like, stop. And <laughs> it didn't stop. Like, fine, just have your way with me, divine. My higher self, whatever. I felt so good. 
in this retreat. So good. It's the euphoria, this ecstasy that was just there. A lot of you guys that were there with me saw me that when we were going back on day seven, when we were entering the hall after the walking body electric and after the breakfast when we were going back to the last session before we do our coherence and you know conclude the, the entire retreat. So I started dancing from the hallway and I'm just dancing and I'm just swinging my arms and I'm just I'm not even looking at people, I'm just looking at the ceiling. And I'm just so high that random people would just come and just grab me and just hug me and just tell me how happy they feel. They're like, you're, 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 what you're feeling is contagious, like we're feeling it. Because, you know, we're meditating together, so we're quite bonded to people. And, you can, and within that such high energies, you can, you can feel people quite a bit. I mean, I was talking to my, um, my friend who I meditated with the whole week without talking. It was so wild, like we were just passing messages back and forth without talking to each other. Fun, right? Um, which was surprising for her, it was surprising for me too, but it was just, it just, everything was just too magical. Things that you normally would have never even heard of, let alone experience. You would think that this is just some movie stuff happening to you when you were a sleepwalker. But once you start this work, then nothing is crazy anymore. Nothing is wild anymore. So I danced my way all the way to the, the stage. There was nobody there dancing yet, but I was. I was just dancing. And a couple of the people that saw me fall um, on the floor in the walking body meditation, because we had to do the, the, the standing breath. When I did the standing breath on the beach, I was knocked out. I was just on the floor. So a lot of people got worried about me. Dr. Joe's staff took pictures, and the green hat people were, you know, with me there on the floor, and they were, they were making sure, they were removing sand from my face, and they were rubbing my shoulder and palms. They just want to make sure that I'm having a good time with a pineal gland, but I don't hurt myself. <clears throat> then Dr. Joe starts the, the, the show, the, the final talk, and he made fun of... Uh, me falling. He said, I saw you guys and you fell and, and then you started again. And I was like, yeah, I started again. And then I fell again. I was out again. Um, that kept happening a lot on day six and seven. Unbelievable experience. Unbelievable. You're just, you're just in awe. You're in just a beautiful shock of what you're capable of. And you can upgrade you know what they say in seven days, your brain, if you're all in, right, if you're completely committed to this, you don't miss things, you're just in it. You get out of your own way. In seven days, from having no experience in meditations, to doing the entire day, seven days worth of work, your brain looks like you're a monk. What they call it, novice meditators. Yeah, your brain looks like you're a monk. Crazy. When they say 90% of the people have an 80% different brain when they leave. That's crazy, right? And then you go back, you continue the work, so you can continue to solidify those new changes inside of you. What happens then is you feel new things, you think new thoughts, and when you're feeling new feelings, and it's sending new messages to your brain, and then your brain is having new thoughts, which is sending messages back to your heart for new feelings, and it's this beautiful feedback loop. So if you think new things and you feel new things, feel, feel new feelings, you then make different choices, different decisions, different act. So if you now act differently and think differently and feel differently, you have a different personality. And if you then continue to stay in that state, then your hologram, your reality must reflect those changes. Because it's, the outer world is just a reflection of the inner world, right? I was talking to a friend of mine, and she told me that she has gotten to a place where she has no desires. She's like, I don't even 
pick my realities anymore of what I want to experience. I'm just letting it all to my higher self to pick them for me. Because what do I know what's good for me? Or what I decided to, to, to experience when I chose this reality, this life. But my higher self knows. She's like, I'm just going to be extremely grateful for where I am in life and what I have in life. And I'm going to stay connected to the source and stay connected to the divine. And I'm going to have that higher self choose the next realities for me. They know what I want. So, those are some of the experiences. Oh, yeah, and the coherence healings were very, very good. I mean, nothing is crazy anymore. So if, there's, if you're a sleepwalker watching, just keep an open mind. You know, this retreat also told me, taught me, that I really can heal people just by being near them and just by touching them. You know, now I have done that a few times in my life. But one of the friends that I made from New Zealand she has something wrong with the left side of her body or something, neuronal issues, so nerve issues on the left side of her body, and that gives her pain. You know, left side of her entire body, right? And then she feels pain um, on her left side. And when I had this synchronizing my, your, your energy to the future self, Meditation, it was really strong. I was shaking. I was still in and out. My, the door was open. The door was still open. When I came back from the, the meditation and I crawled over, you know, Jetta and J Joshua, and I'm like, Catherine, give me your left hand. And she gave me her left hand, and I, and I just pressed it in my arms, and I just, I was like, ah, they told me to touch the left side of your body. So I am. Uh, and she immediately started to feel something. She like put her hands on her, uh, her hand on her chest, and she like, like she felt the instant connection. There was something that was bothering me in my middle back that day, and she she felt it. She felt it in her back. So there was this instant connection. And the next day, she told me she's not feeling pain. There was a there was a, another lady. She, she she was paralyzed from her neck down. Twenty years ago, twenty plus years ago, and she had one of the meditations. I, I don't know if it was the kaleidoscope meditation or something, but one of the evening meditations, whichever one was the last meditation on Wednesday, guys. You probably somebody somebody I'm sure remembers so the last meditations on Wednesday. This lady, who was paralyzed from her neck down, moved her hands and touched her face for the first time in 20 years. And it was such a big shock for everybody. All the volunteers, Dr. Joe. And I'm sitting there thinking, we take it for granted. We take for granted so many things that we can move things and we can touch ourselves. We can love ourselves. We can touch other people. It was unbelievable. And then I had dinner with the EO, EO members and um, the, the volunteers. So we then celebrated uh, this lady's healing, <clears throat> transformation. You know, you get so many hugs. You get so many smiles and hugs and high fives. At these events, you make so many friends. And when you come home, you're like, <laughs> you hug. We're getting short on hugs. Beautiful thing, a beautiful problem to have. <laughs> what an amazing life. What a wild ride this life has been. Well, that's my experience. I will be capturing um, the advanced follow up in Dallas starting April 24th, 25th. I'll be there on the 23rd. But, yeah, I'll be there probably two days. 
before I can enjoy some Dallas food and everything. Because once the event starts, there's nothing else you can do. I'll probably be up at 3 in the morning, go to sleep at midnight, be up at 3 in the morning again, go to sleep at midnight until it's over. You know, some people got a lot of sleep, but my after afterwards, I would be sitting with the people that I'm, I was meditating with, our group. We would just hang out. We would talk. We would discuss things. We would just sit under the stars and on the beach and, you know, stay in the pool and just talk, 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 talk. There was so much to do, so much to experience, so much to share that sleep was not a priority. And I was like, I'll go to sleep when I go home. Fine. And then I would go to sleep for two hours. Yeah, we would just get a two-hour sleep every night and back at it. And yeah, I was very sleepy after the event was over. But during the event, no, no, let's go. Let's do stuff. It was amazing. It was unbelievable. I don't remember how I felt when I had my first one, but I'm attending my third one now, so more to come, more magic to share with you guys. I love you.